If that doesn't make you think of Halloween, nothing will. Calvin Gastein at the Adirondack Coast Wine and Cider Food Festival at the Crate Civic Center, just a little bit north of beautiful downtown Plattsburgh on this October 12th, 2013. And uh, very shortly I'll be getting in front of the camera and Judy Castine will be grabbing the camera. This is uh, the inside of the crate. Uh, there's no hockey or other sports activities going on here, indoor soccer, whatever going on today. It's wine and food and cider everywhere you look. We'll give you a quick look here at the list of the wineries involved. You can read along at home. The winer, wines and cider, I believe, are included in the same list. And then you have the vendors. Not that the people who are in the wine business aren't vendors, I don't know. So I assume they'd be allowed to sell their wine to take home today. So you got all these vendors, and you got a few restaurants that are here also. And this is what the layout of the, <laughs> of the facility looks like. This is our third stop of the day. Judy and I were up early, we went to the North Country Honor Flight for World War II veterans. We got to the Plattsburgh Air Force Base at 6.30 to cover that. From there, we went to the Champlain Valley Quilters Guild Quilt Show for 2013. That was at the Field House. I started at 10, and this started at noon. We are about 12.19, give or take a few seconds right now. We're gonna to talk to as many of these as we reasonably can, but obviously, if you looked at that list, we're not gonna be able to talk to everybody, but we'll talk to as many familiar faces as we can, and hopefully uh, we'll talk to somebody that uh, you're interested in. So stick around, we've got a, an interesting program coming up, and if you're looking for Gordy Little, he's uh, vacationing in Georgia, so uh, he won't be with us here today, but I think we'll, we'll be able to uh, to handle this, and we might even uh, taste uh, some of the uh, some of the, uh, the samples that might be hanging around, or maybe not. We'll see. Okay, as soon as we got in the door and uh, started to take a step, this young lady came running over with two official press releases. Two of them. What's your name? Amber Parliament. It says it right here. Yes. <laughs> and it says the 5631000. That sounds like the Chamber of Commerce number. It is the Chamber of Commerce. I work for the Adirondack Coast Visitors Bureau, a division of the North Country Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Can you say that ten times? I know. Last? <laughs> it's a mouthful. <laughs> Do you have to say it that way every time you yes, say it? Yes, I do. <laughs> Mandatory. Yes. The boss might be watching. Exactly. Uh, okay, and uh, uh, this has got wine and stuff. I'm trying to remember when the last time I saw Amber Parliament on a basketball court or other sports venue. Are you old enough to be, uh, be here? I am old enough to be here. I graduated high school in 2008, so. 2008, that's five and a half years I know. already. Yeah, yeah. It marches on, doesn't it? It does, it does. Okay, what should we know about this here, Amber? So this is the second annual Adirondack Coast Wine Cider and Food Festival. Okay. So last year was the first time we did it and we had a great success. There were so many people that came. So this year we kind of took uh, the critiques and everything that people had from last year and just made it better <laughs> and hopefully more successful today, which I'm sure it will be. Um, but we did some new stuff this year. There's actually, it's called Race to Taste, uh, which is they had schools that are competing in a culinary competition. There's SUNY Oneonta, SUNY Schenectady, and SUNY Plattsburgh. All their culinary schools uh -huh. are competing right now. They didn't know the products that they were going to use before. They have a certain okay. amount of time to get everything done, and then they'll get judged at the end of the day. Are those the people we saw And outside? they are outside right now cooking nice on. Sunny, nice sunny day, why not? Yes, exactly. How would you have done it rain? We would have brought them in. Oh. We would have figured it out. <laughs> it turned out perfect. Yeah, I know it is a beautiful day. So um, we also have there's 16 wineries here today. That's a lot. Yes, that's a lot. Wide. Um, I believe the I'm not exactly sure where the long where the furthest one came from, um, but definitely all of our most of our wineries on the Adirondack Coast are here as well. So it's really great to get everyone together. 
Okay, well, what is this Adirondack Coast? What's that? The Adirondack Coast is what we brand ourselves as now. So we? it's Who's we? the Visitors Bureau, the Adirondack okay. Coast Visitors Bureau. Um, so basically, it's Clinton County. It's now called the Adirondack Coast. Oh, just Clinton County? Yes. Essex yep. County, not the Adirondack Coast? Uh, it can still be. It's, it can be. It's greater Adirondack Coast area. Greater, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so wineries, uh, they're certainly growing. There's certainly a great number of them. Now, you said last year. Were you involved last year? I was involved last year, yep. We yep. help uh, promote the event, market the event, and help out any way we can. Okay, so who was uh, the official event putter on her? Um, the official event putter on her is, uh, his name is Tom Frey. Uh -huh. He actually owns Elf's Farm Winery and Cider House here in Plattsburgh. Just a little ways down the road. Exactly. So this is his kind of idea and he brought it to life and he's really the main go-getter for it. One thing I've learned, uh, the first one in the area was a fellow named uh, uh, Fabro, Phil Fabro. Uh, and, you know, he's helped other people get along and they all seem to help each other. They're not None of these people feel that they're competitors. No. They're all working together. They really just try to make it better for themselves, and they really don't look at it as competitors. If somebody stops off at Amazing Grace Winery, they'll say, like, oh, Vesco Ridge Vineyard is right down the road. Go stop by and see them, too. So it's really great. Yeah, so they're all, uh, you know, they're all knowing, they all know that this is, the more they help the area, the more they help themselves in the long run, and they're, they're exactly. all very generous folks. Exactly. All right, exactly. So what else do you do when you're not good handling wine? <laughs> well, at the Visitors Bureau, we actually handle pretty much everything. We have three core strengths that we have identified in the Clinton County Destination Master Plan. So our core strengths are, one is agriculture, which is why we're doing the wine festival and stuff like that. The second is outdoor recreation. This is a huge area for outdoor rec. And the third is history. Battle of Plattsburgh Bicentennial is coming up. So just everything like that we try to immerse ourselves in, so we're fully rounded. <laughs> And those are three great things that can draw people to this area. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and more and more we're trying to appreciate our history and, you know, so this is great. Yes, so, definitely. So, you've been at the Chamber how long? I have been at the Chamber for a little over a year now. Uh, I graduated from SUNY Plattsburgh in 2012, so and I got the job right after, which is pretty lucky, but yeah. yes. Right. yes. Anything else, Amber, that I wasn't smart enough to ask you? I think that's pretty much it. I All think right. we're good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Was that okay? That's great. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, we didn't get very far before we came to a, a table here. And who are you representing? Chazy Orchards. And who are you? Barb Drew. Barb Drew. I think the Drews own that, don't they? We, we bought it about three <laughs> years ago now, yeah. So. And this isn't apples. Uh, we have a little bit of everything today. We have um, apple salsa that's made right at the orchard, apple butter, mm -hmm. and maple apple butter. We have homemade fudge that's new this year. So we have several different kinds of fudge. We have apple brownies, apple cider donuts, and hot spice cider. <laughs> so we have it all going on. And we have some, and we apple. do act, but we do have some <laughs> apples over there. And the traditional apples. Now your, what is it called? Shazy Orchard's Farm Market? Yes. Yeah. And that's what the third season this year. This right? is our third season. Now the only problem I the only complaint I got about that is they're not open long enough for the year. <laughs> I know. I know people miss us, but then it makes it they miss us and then they want to come back in the fall. <laughs> so it's a destination in the fall. It's it like, is. You know, going to Park Safari. You can only go in the winter in the summer, so it's the same thing right. here. You can only go exactly. in the fall. And you're open until right around Christmas time. We are we we're open until Christmas. Yeah. And uh, you're right there in Route 9 in Shazy, right at the Shazy Orchards uh, uh, building there where people right. have been buying apples for years and years. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, even though you're, when you're not open, the apples are still available. You can still buy apples right through until May or June. So. Okay, now you also at the store you offer fresh pies and, and things like that. My home, I really keep telling that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I need to talk to taller people so when I do this. <laughs> Yeah, we have right at the orchard. Put my hand in my pocket. So. <laughs> there you go. Go ahead. Right at the orchard, we have homemade apple pies, fresh donuts every day. Uh, now we have the fudge turnovers, cookies, uh, honey, all kinds of fall things. Okay, so what happens? Everybody who's uh, walks through here can get a free sample. Is that how it works? We can get a free sample. We're sampling the salsa, the apple butter, um, fudge. Apple brownies, donuts, and cider, and apples. Okay, so, so. They, 
they paid a fee at the door to come in and yes yeah they can yep. just go around yep. and sample sample for, yep and, uh, and yep. How, how long what's your started at noon till what eight till eight o'clock tonight yeah and is it a two-day event no just uh just, just today. today just today we came last year and it was a great event a lot of people very, yeah, you know like good exposure be, yeah yeah yep. that could be the same today uh, and of course, you got to still have people minding the store back in Shay Z. We do. You didn't we close do. up shop to be here. We didn't. We didn't. Now, so they on call if you run out of stuff here, you're going to. We are. We have people that are runners for us. <laughs> we do. <laughs> what was your most popular sample last year? Oh, the apple cider donuts. Was people it? love the cider donuts. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Especially when you get them from a. A yeah. genuine apple orchard. Right? right, and they were they're fresh today, so the cider donuts are, are a big hit. Okay, anything else, Barbara, that I uh, should uh, talk to you about? I don't think so. I think right. we're good. Have a good day. All right, have fun. All right, thanks, Calvin. I'll try not to wave my hand. Anymore. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Are you going to talk? No, let me talk. Uh, they got, well, these two people are arguing over, I want to talk, no, I want to talk. Did I misunderstand that? No. no that's the way it is. You want to talk and she wants to talk. Hi, right, who are you? Marvin Bayshard. And who are you? Tammy. Right, and you guys are representing what? Bayshard Sugar House. Are you going to do the talking, Marv? No, I'll let her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bayshard Sugar House, that's somewhere in West Shay Z, where is that? Um, Ingraham, more, Ingraham. it's off, uh, off of Route 9. Off of Route 9. Yeah. Okay, so near Vesco's, I think there's a... Yeah, Vesco's right in there. ...driveway that went way in the back Yeah, old dead end road, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a variety of maple products. We have maple sugar, granulated sugar, the cream, um, maple molded sugar, um, maple coffee, lots of stuff for tasting today. Okay, so it's more than just maple syrup, huh? Yeah. Making all these, these items, uh, do you have a, a storefront there? Or um, we just it? started doing Maple Weekend every year, and people will tell us what they want, and we'll they'll come to the they'll come to the sugar house to buy it, or we can bring it to them. Or okay, but yep. people were driving by and they said, oh. Yeah, they stop. In. People stop by. We don't have any set hours right now. Oh, oh, wait. Miss? Yeah, but they call. We've got our business card out, so people will okay, call and stop by. 518-846-7498. Right. Well, not that I'm going to remember that. <laughs> so is it listed under Marvin Bayshard or under Bayshard Sugar House? I'll try to keep my hand down, Judy. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, what? Ask you it's what? listed under Bayshard, well, Marvin Bayshard. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Marvin. Okay. yeah. Not, not Bayshard Sugar House. Don't look right. Up, don't look I, up Bayshard Sugar House. It would be under Marvin. Yeah. Do they have a Facebook page or website or anything Yes, like that? we do have a Facebook page, and I have a website. We're working on redesigning the website, so... That's up and coming. Okay, what are you giving away today to the folks? We are giving away maple molded sugar, uh, maple cream, coffee. Um, what else do we have? And I've got a basket people can put their names in for winning. And we've got samples of syrup in case they are not too sure of the difference between a light, medium, dark. Okay. Now, uh, it's only been a few years I've been aware that you've had a, uh, you haven't been in business that long as a sugar house, right? Well, we started back in 98. 98, that long. But in the last three, four years, we've been making the candy and cream. And now, syrup. was that an existing uh, maple syrup area? Did you buy an no. existing I built there? No, I built a new building. Built a new building? Yeah. It, it, the trees already there or what? Yes. They weren't being tapped? No, they weren't being tapped, so I don't have this tap. Okay. So you've got, how far off the road are you? Oh, what's the name of that road? Sanger Lane. Sanger it's Lane. But they're coming off, Sanger Lane is coming off of what road? Oh, Stratton Hill Road. Stratton Hill Road. <laughs> the Stratton Hill Road takes kind of a turn there, and you think you're on the Ratter Road, but you're not. Right. And it gets to the intersection of the Stratton Hill Road. Yeah, Stratton Hill Road ties up at Ingraham and right. It goes right to Route 9. And the Rada Road ends. So. Correct. And we have plenty of Bayshards. The Bayshard Sugar House road signs are out, so yeah. people can find us. So you're far, how far off the road? From Singer Lane, we're only off about 700 feet. Oh, not too far. Then. No. no. you got to come down the road to see the Sugar House. Yeah. Yeah. Down okay. the oh. So you have items for sale today. I didn't ask Barb earlier, yeah. but Casey Orchards has items for sale here today. So. 
See, same thing here. You're here they have the samples, but you're also looking to sell a few things while you're here, right? Yes. Right. yes. Yeah. <laughs> not just here to hand out samples. No. <laughs> no. We'll visit. And visit. <laughs> visit yeah. Yeah. Were you here last year? Was your first trip? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, it's early in the day, and uh, people are starting to gather. And yeah. I wish you guys good luck, and uh, I'm going to take a piece. Oh, definitely oh, take some treats. Please. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Talking to you like you're new today. <laughs> All right. uh, we have stopped at a place called Homestead Maple, and it's got a Shazy location on it. Who are you? I am Angela Swan. I'm from Homestead Maple, and we're located on the yeah right. We are located on the Lakeshore Road. We have a tiny little sugar house. If you've ever been driving by there to see the leaves, you may have driven by. Um, or the lake. <laughs> I'll be out to see the lake as well, right? Uh, I've got maple leaves on the door, so should easy to find. Now, is there maple trees there by the lake? You got enough maple trees to, to do all this? We have a small sugar bush there. We also have two other sugar bushes that we tap. So, But we do have, you'd be surprised, we have 500 taps right around that little area. Wow. And that's enough to keep my husband busy. <laughs> and you? <laughs> I do the selling. He does the producing. Oh, okay. So what do you like to promote today? Well, I'm also president of the New York State Maple Producers Association for our area. And Excuse so me, I didn't realize. <laughs> I didn't well, talking with, say that again. I thought I would cover that. There's seven say regions it, of the New York, New York again. State. I'm interrupting your spiel here. <laughs> say that title again. Okay. I'm also president of the Northeastern New York State Maple Producers Association, which covers Clinton, Essex, and Franklin counties. Okay. So I'm also helping to promote some things that they're doing today. Okay. Um, so what I'd really, what I'm really excited about, if I can step away. This book just came out last week. It's done by one of our members, Michael Farrell, out of Lake Placid. It's called The Sugar Maker's Companion, and he comes up with ideas of new ways to promote syrup. And we expect this to be a very a revolutionary book. He talks about selling sap for drinking, making uh, syrup out of walnut, out of birch, out of shagbark hickory, um, all these new and very exciting ways to, to make syrup. So this isn't really a how-to, step-by-step guide. We've got enough of those on the market. This takes us a step further. I think this is going to take our industry pretty far. These are on sale today. How much? These are thirty dollars today. The book price is thirty nine ninety five on the back. Oh, Today's show today. special is thirty dollars. So I hope people will pick this up. He does a great job. Okay. Now uh, drinking sap. When I was a kid, we used to tap a few trees, and I loved to drink the sap. It's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Sweet water. Yeah, it yeah, it's great. We do the same thing. So I'm also promoting, we have a Maple Weekend the last two weekends in March. We have 20 sugar houses participating in 2014. And that's something you can come to any, any or all of the sugar houses. We had a new term last year called Maple Weekending. It's four total days, so you can start at one sugar house and do the route in Essex County and then go over to the Lake Placid area the next day or start at another sugar house and have a pancake and, and then tour the rest of us. We each have a different flavor that we sample. So ours, for example, is Maple Soda last year. Um, there was another the sugar house that had horse and wagon rides, um, maple cream, maple donuts, all kinds of different things. I was surprised that of the 20 different sugar houses, no two were serving the same maple dessert or maple thing. So it's a very fun thing to do. The only problem with that is for people like yourself, you can't get around to enjoy the other folks, right? <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. We're very sorry we can't get around. We'll have to do another Maple Weekend just for the producers. So you can all opt out <laughs> for one week. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Alternate. Yeah. So that's, that comes up uh, at the end of March, uh, 22nd, 23rd, 29th, and 30th. That's for the 2014. Mm -hmm. So that's your, what you're shooting for the last two weekends in March? Every year it's the last two weekends in March. Yeah. So, and the other thing I'm selling for my own business today is we have gift boxes today. I'm giving one away um, as a promotion, and we have those for sale today for Christmas. And you're supposed to have something for free, too. They have the cookies. Is that what they do? And we have the cookies, right? It's a food festival. We had to do something oh, with maple, so right. I have maple spice cookies today. Okay, you have a nice, and very maple nice granola. Display. Thank you. I'm so glad you stopped. All right. Anything else? Anything else I should have asked you, Andrew? Let me take a look, see if I remember. Nope, I think that's it. All right. Thanks. Thank you so much. Right. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. I right, moved over a few feet, and uh, we're not going to talk a long time to this guy because uh, this, today's a Saturday, and in about three days, Joey Trombley and I are going to be chatting with you at your, at your store. But tell us your name anyway. Shane Duto of D&D Meats. D&D Meats and Sayota. Yep. Now, do you say Sayota or Sayota? I say Sayota. <laughs> Only out of towners say Sayota. Yep. Sometimes they say Scotia and they're about four hours, yeah. three hours too far. Yeah, I know. You get a delivery truck that pulls up. Then. Yeah. Want to know where the local Walmart is. Shane, <laughs> you've been uh, veering off from regular uh, 
eating hamburg and stuff and you started this uh, Jesus and Crow business. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're making 70 products now locally in our store. Uh, we still do our fresh cut meats and our hamburger and all that stuff, but we've had all our processing, smoking. Uh, we use a lot of local ingredients, team up with a lot of local producers to make our products. Uh, we just took it in a whole different atmosphere than what my dad was doing for the last 30 years. Well, you know, you're still doing what you were doing before, yeah, plus you've added it yeah, on. We're, we're still doing the same initial work we did. We're just we're adding on a lot more for our customers. We're a one-shop meat stop, we like to say. Uh, you know, we can make and develop just about anything. If not, we're willing to give it a try. Yeah, your father used to work for O'Neill Packing. That's uh, I think he learned out of the meat cutting business. He started at uh, O'Neill, but he asked me before that. He started at the meat packing place in Champlain, uh, Alco. He was a manager there. Then he went O'Neill, but then Paler. So he's worked all these different meat packings. And then in '81, he started the business. Now uh, before they, uh, your, his, him and his, your wife, your mother, uh, opened the store up there out delivering. Yeah, we, we used to have a delivery route. Uh, house to house for residential. Now our delivery route consists of restaurants and orchards. Um, we deliver there and then we do deliver to a, a few places, you know, out of towns that want meats. We make a drop spot to meet us in Plattsburgh. So we try to be convenient still and we don't go door to door like we used to. Yeah. Now uh, I see the, uh, the, the JC jerky sign above there. It says chicken bread, fresh brown chuck, rope sausage, breakfast sausage, pork chops, slab bacon, beef steak. Are those all Turkeys? No, those are all regular meats. Um, regular meats. Yeah, the you know it's hard. Everybody thinks because we we try to affiliate with the Jesus Crow with the Smokehouse with D&D Incorporated. But, you know we have 20 different types of jerkies and snack sticks, and then the other 50 is between smoked cheeses, our summer sausages, smoked bacon, salamis, bolognese, all that stuff. We make some real traditional stuff like ring bologna. Um, we still make uh, head cheese and stuff like that too. Okay, I see uh, you're getting into. Uh deer and stuff like that? Yeah, we're, we're getting into our hunting season. We've always processed deer, but now we have the smokehouse. We can start making our own hot dogs, um, sausage, and all that different stuff that smoked where before we couldn't. It was just fresh stuff. Now we can start doing smoking. I think Stones and Morrisonville started doing that several years ago. Yeah, Stones does that. They do pretty basic stuff. Uh, I like to say that I bring the science into a lot deeper than anyone else. Uh, well, go ahead and say that. Well, we bring the science into a lot deeper than most places. I mean, our products are unique. Uh, we do a lot of unique mixes and stuff, and uh, it's not just your original summer sausage. It's either jalapeno and habanero summer sausage, or we got peppers and onions built in the summer sausage. You know, a lot of different components built in our sausages, so it's not like your generic hot sausage, sweet Italian sausage breakfast. We make like cheddar and parsley. We make uh, crazy cranberry. We just make a lot of unique stuff. You know, to, to, to try to meet everybody's taste bud needs. Okay, so. Joey Trombley and I will be doing a, a program there, as I said, in about three days. I'm not sure cable-wise which will be on first, but for those of you watching on the internet, uh, just go to the internet and you can find under Talk and Business, D&D uh, uh, &D Meets Chapter 2. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, you're selling stuff here today. You have three we, samples, too? We got a lot of samples, and we're definitely selling everything. Selling everything. So we, we, have, we have samples in the store, too. Anyone that ever wants to come in, demand the sample. We'll, we'll open up a package, or we'll have a package open. Like any try. We're a big sampling family. <laughs> as long as they're, they're serious about uh, wanting to sample it for the right reason, not just to get a well, free snack off the street. We're willing to work with anyone. We, we know there's people like that who just want free samples, but... We, one of them. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll take what we can get. If they want free samples, walk away. Or they want free sample, we'll entice them to buy something. Okay. All right. Thank you. Shane, Shane Dutel from D and D Meats and Jesum Crow Beef Jerky. Thank you. Yeah. We can't seem to get out of that Scioto West Shazy area. Now we're at Gagno Farms, and we're talking to Bonnie Gagno. All right, and uh, you are known worldwide for what? <laughs> Jams and jellies. Jams and jellies. <laughs> okay, and uh, how many different jams and or jellies do you make? Um, I might have between 15 and 20. I do regular flavors and hot pepper varieties. The what varieties? Hot, hot pepper. Hot pepper? Yeah, fruit flavored hot peppers. Holy cow, that yep. doesn't sound like much fun to me. <laughs> <laughs> So apparently there's a market for that. Oh yeah, yep. So they're really good. Just a little hot taste to a sweet, hot and sweet. Sweet, sometimes. hot and sweet. Yep, huh? yep. <laughs> My wife's here, so I can't say anything. <laughs> <laughs>
She'll shut that camera off at a moment's notice here. <laughs> How many flavors do you have, Bonnie, as, as if you might have a count? Uh, there, like I say, there's probably between, sometimes I have 15 and 20, between 15 and 20, depending on uh, the season. Oh, but throughout the year? Yeah, throughout the year, yep. It depends on what fruit is in for that and if I can get enough of it, like plums and pears and stuff like that, you know. That okay, do you grow any of your own uh, vegetables? No, no, but I get them all local. It's all local stuff that we get it from, like the blackberries are wild. You know, we get them up in the woods and stuff, so, yep. Wild blackberries, okay. Yeah. Um, what's the difference between a jam and a jelly? A jam is the fruit, the, the the whole fruit, and a jelly has no seeds in it. So it's kind of like a clear texture, you know, with, with no seeds in it. Okay, that's a jelly. Yep. All right, so how about preserves? When I buy strawberry preserves, would that be more That's jelly? a jam, more that's jam. jam. Yeah, that's got the whole fruits in it. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's a jam. All right. Yep. I think I have uh, understand that. So. <laughs> Until about three minutes from now. What's your most popular variety? Um, probably raspberry hot pepper and um, I don't know, maybe strawberry or raspberry plain flavors. Yep, regular flavors. Uh, yep. where, where do people find your stuff? Um, I'm at the farmer's market, but that's going to be coming to a close in the next couple of weeks. We're extending the market for Saturday and Sunday, or just Saturday, I'm sorry, um, for the next two weeks from 9 to 12. That's uh, on Durkee Street? Yep, that's on Durkee Street, yep. Uh -huh. And, and um, I have some of my jams over to Parker's, um, and I do a lot of shows. We'll be doing the SUNY show at the Field House this year. So wherever there's a, a craft show, that's where we go. Do you have a website or? No, no website. No, 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 no Facebook nope. page, no nope. website. No. Nope. It's the 21st century, you know. I know, I know, but I'm busy enough. Thanks. <laughs> Is this all you do? Uh, no, I work oh. at Beekman Town School oh, full time. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, and we uh, sell the vegetables. We do, you know, three to four markets a week. So. So. I keep you busy. Yeah, keeps you out of the. Keeps yep. you out of the uh, trouble areas. So, yeah. Uh, when did you start doing hot peppers? Hot, the hot pepper stuff. When? Yeah. All season, all year. Oh, but when? Is something relatively new? Oh no, uh, probably for the last maybe four or five years, maybe. Yep. Uh, yeah, and they're big hit. What prompted that? Did you taste somebody um, else's and say, hey, I can do that? Or? Yeah, yeah. And I kind of fixed up my own version of it. So, yeah, I so adapted you, it a little bit. You yeah. often go to a, somebody else who's selling this stuff and take a little oh, yeah. taste? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like mm. to compare. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them can't compare with yours. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> nice, to, nice to verify that. Yep, right? that's right. Uh, well, anything else, Bonnie, that I should uh, ask you about that I'm not smart enough? No, no, I think you covered it. Yep. All right, Ronnie Gagno and Russ Chazy, and you can't look her up on the internet because she ain't there. <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> on Facebook? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we've stopped at another booth, and it's Rolf's Orchard, and you are? I'm Shannon Rolf's. Shannon Rolf's. Uh, that's not R-A-L-P-H here, it's R-U-L-F-S. R-U-L-F-S. Oh, Rolf's. Is it, is Everyone it drops the S, but it's Rolf's. So the, the S is part of the name, not yeah. part of the yeah. plural. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's All a right. tough last name. So where's Rolf's name? What's, that, what's the nationality of that? German. German Rolf's. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to confuse you with the Irish roll, you know. <laughs> so what are you doing here? Uh, well, it's our second year here. We started last year when they started the festival. <laughs> You've been here the year before. You've been all alone. Uh, yeah, we would have. <laughs> um, so we have our apple pie, which I think we're famous pretty much for our pie and donuts and our cider. So we brought a little bit of everything today, apples. Okay, what do you... You got samples, what are you trying to sell? Yeah. Um, well, sampling, we have cider, apple crumb pie, and some fruit breads. And then for sale, we have apples, uh, caramel apples, donuts, all that yummy stuff that you really enjoy in the fall. Okay. And where's Wolf Searcher located? We're in Peru. Uh, any particular road or just somewhere <laughs> in Peru? Uh, 531 Bear Swamp Road, off exit 35. Okay. Uh, okay. Now uh, uh, you have a, a store there. Yeah, we're open year-round. Uh, we close just two days a year, so you can get cider and donuts and pies, 
Any day you want. Two days, yeah, open Sundays. We're open every day. Every. Unless we can. Day. <laughs> every day. Unless we can convince Grandpa to give us a little break, but. He, he wants to work every day. So you get Christmas off? And New Year's Day. But not Thanksgiving? We're open till noon because of all the pie orders. I see. Well, that makes sense. If I were yeah. the grandpa, I'd insist on the same thing. <laughs> ah, so it's a family business. How uh, yes. many family members are involved? Uh, grandpa, my Aunt Patty makes the pies, um, myself, and cousin. That's, yeah, not many family members. <laughs> It's not many people for a seven day a week operation. No, we have a lot of managers that have been there a really long time though, like over 20 years, so. Of people other than family members. Yeah, right? people think they're family, so we just let it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, so. Uh, anything else that I should uh, be smart enough to ask you here? Hmm. Well, hmm. Uh, this fall we have Pumpkin rides, apple picking, which is done now, pumpkin unfortunately. Ride. What's a ride? So you take a wagon ride out to the pumpkin patch and pick your own pumpkin. Okay. Any size you can carry, you can bring back. Uh, and we have a corn maze, and starting tonight, and then the next two Saturdays is a flashlight night. So you come go through in the dark. Would we'll you have flashlight through the maze? Uh huh. And there's a bonfire and s'mores and hot drinks. And all that. Uh, how many people have you lost over the years that you're? None that we know of, yeah. I mean, they could still be in there. Could be. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah. No, so far none. So, okay. that starts today. That starts today. Oh, well, okay. So, people watching it on the internet, uh, they'll be available starting on the 13th. I won't get this on today on the internet. <laughs> yeah, so we'll have it uh, next Saturday, the 19th, and then the 26th. And you'll be doing this annually? So, yeah, all that stuff is on? We do it every year, year, yeah. Okay. All right. Looks like your stuff is popular here. There's been a non-stop flow of people. Yeah. All right. Is that your aunt that's working the table? or? No, that's no? my mom. Oh. I, this is our busiest weekend at Ralph's, so I think my aunt's been... She's right in the pie, oh, though. Okay. You got a, you're talking to the folks at Jay-Z Orchard. They're, they still got their store open, and they got in their ear. The same thing here. You, I know. You got the store open, and you're here. Yeah. We had the ha half marathon in Peru this morning, so we had to bring stuff over there. It's this crazy time of year, but... We like it. It keeps us pretty busy. All right. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Bye-bye. you got to yell at me here because I can't hear, especially with the background. All right. I'm going to move to the other side. So don't move. Bad ear. All right. <laughs> it's better? No, this is this is a bad ear. That's the bad ear. Oh, okay. Well, we'll go to this side. Here we go. Okay. Uh, what's your name, young fella? Dan Vesco, Vesco Ridge Vineyards, West Vesco. Jay Z, New York. West Jay Z, uh, also uh, Ingraham area. You're not afraid to say Ingraham? No, nope, I'm not. In fact, I'd like to say Ingraham, but they won't let me. Yeah, well, I guess there's no post office anymore. There, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But everybody knows where Ingraham is. Yep, right? we're two houses up from Sanger Sugar House. Yeah, Sanger has a lot to do with the. <laughs> With your wife's side of the family? Yep. Now, uh, uh, Gordy and I were there, did a little story with you guys. Uh, any changes in the past couple of years? Yes, we have a brand new tasting room now. We've moved out of the house into the tasting room. We have uh, about 700 square feet of tasting room. I have 1,200 square feet of uh, wine making facilities with storage and a new crushing pad. We're right up at the vineyard, so when you walk outside the tasting room, we have a patio there where you can uh, drink a glass of wine or buy a bottle of wine and sit out there. And next year, we're building a new deck, so things are moving along. You want people to stop in, it sounds like. Yep, I want them to stop in and enjoy it. You know, bring your own picnic lunch and buy a bottle of wine from us. And it seems like next year we probably will be venturing out to have uh, New York New York beers on tap as well as uh, wines. So we're branching out. I think I saw a post from you guys about something about uh, wine ice cream. Yep, we have white. We have uh, what is it? A rosé? No. Cherry Merlot is what we have right now. It's 6.5 percent by volume. Uh, it's uh, going cream, out. Cream or, or alcohol? Uh, alcohol. <laughs> it's going out the door. People think it's the greatest thing in the world. 
You know, we have uh, wine dips, we have wine ice cream, we have wine slushies, wine bread, wine soup. We have everything now. We're trying to put as much wine into everything plus our customers. <laughs> Do you have enough grapes to handle all this? Well, basically, we uh, this is our second harvest. Uh, last year we harvested. This year we tripled what we had last year. Uh, we're still far from being able to supply what we need. So we still go out, and I still get grapes from the Finger Lakes, uh, Niagara area, uh, Long Island. So we run around, pick up grapes, bring them back. and. Yeah, it's coming along pretty good as far as uh, being able to have our, this year we'll have our first estate bottle of wine, which means that it was grown on the property, produced on the property, and bottled on the property. Okay. Uh, you're open, uh, what are your hours, what are your days? What, what, uh, we're open, year? excuse me, we're open from May 1st to uh, the last the last weekend before Christmas. Uh, usually during the summer, it's Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, noon to 5. Uh, it's starting to slow up a little bit now. Everybody's back at school and back at their work. But uh, we're still open and we'll be that way until Christmas. So people can just check the Facebook page, a uh, yeah. page? We have a web page. We have Facebook. Uh, they can call us. Uh, I'm usually around doing something in the vineyard, so if I'm there, they can stop and I'll open the door for them. You know? So you're out there working in the... You do, you do your own stomping, right? We do, yeah. I do my own stomping, I do my own cleaning, I do everything. You know, Nan's the CEO and I'm pretty much the other guy. <laughs> but it's really a sight to behold if you go there and you watch these guys actually stomp the grapes from this big vat, jumping up and down. Well, the problem with that is dead bees still sting. <laughs> and it is, you know, when you start picking and you break those grapes and that, that scent goes out, uh -huh. I think every bumblebee, every wasp, everybody's out. And they're just all over. So you got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd uh, want to get too many of them after me at the same time. No, nothing like getting stung three or four times in, within a half hour. <laughs> all right, it looks like you guys are pretty busy here. I hope it's not just samplers. Oh, I think people are starting to get, uh, in the area up here, starting to get used to the uh, North Country wineries and starting to like our products because we're getting a lot of repeat customers. I know, talking to all the other wineries, it's basically the same story. Uh, people are starting to visit it, and we're getting a lot of people from out of town, thanks to the Chamber. You know, we, they've really uh, promoted us. We've got the new wine trail now, the Adirondack Coast Wine Trail. Uh, that was enacted by the governor, I think, a couple weeks ago. So now we're trying to get money together to get signs. <laughs> but all these tourists know where they're going and once they get here, right? Right. Okay. Anything else, Dan? Nope, I think that's it. Thanks for interviewing me. Gives us right. a chance to get out in the news. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Right. Appreciate it. We love to talk to people who grew up in Lion Mountain. Do you know where I can find some? Um, yes. <laughs> But I grew up on Shazy Lake, and I attended oh, Wine Mountain School. <laughs> uh, wasn't your father a miner? Yes, he was. It was Anthony, and they called him Lefty Shuzda. Because he played for the miners for a short period of time, and he was a left-hander. Oh, that's why they call him Lefty. That's and what right. is your name? My name is Suzanne. <laughs> Bayshard. Formerly <laughs> Okay. Yep, I'm married to Martin, who's working right now. Uh, could you find a, could you have found a better models for your uh, wedding portraits there than Martin and Tammy? I mean, that, um, that that doesn't sell nothing well. <laughs> Can you buy those, or do you have to get your own picture? Uh, you have to get your own picture. Oh, okay. I don't think they know they're out here yet. <laughs> well, we won't tell them. No. <laughs> Right, what exactly are you doing, sir? Um, well, we are a custom engraving shop, and we were asked to attend this event to show what kind of media we use. Uh, we pretty much can put your picture, photograph, image, good JPEG on granite, as you can see, glass, um, crystal, wood, anonized aluminum, uh, marble, and it goes on and on and on. I see in front of. Well, Marty, there's some, uh, some we, glasses there. You put them on yes, images we, and glasses? We put image. We designed our own image for this um, event with a grapevine wreath with Adirondack chair and with a glass of wine on the chair. So 
That is a theme that we used and we put them on glasses, cutting boards, coasters, and cutting boards. And the hardwood boards came out really, really nice. So one side could be used as a cutting board edge and the other side for decorative purposes in your home. What seems to be your most popular item? The item today that's selling the most are my ID tags that are made on an Adirondack chair, which is a plastic acrylic hook that it took, attaches to the bottom of the wine glass, and they're in different colors. And if you take a picture of them, you can go on the other side to see what they look like. All right, we'll take a picture. All right, these look a little bit like a, a big, a lot larger than something like a little plastic thing you'd find on a piece of a bread wrapper or something. Right. This is pretty much um, like a little clip-on piece of acrylic that's engraved with my Adirondack chair that has a little glass of wine. And it identifies what wine glass is yours when you put them down. And they've been selling hot today because they're all, we have maybe 10 to 15 different colors. And um, it's just been a good thing. We're promoting uh, breast awareness with the pink ribbon. We have a pink chair. And eventually we'll be doing an Adirondack theme. These are really self-cleaning, well, they're easy to clean, and they're easy to store in your wallet, your purse, anywhere. Okay. So you can, if you're going out to a restaurant, a bar type of situation, you can... You can identify your glass. So it doesn't have to be just at home in a party, you can right. take it with you wherever. Well, Four-wheeler boat. <laughs> you can have a pocket full of these. Exactly. Now, do you make them big enough to fit over the edge of a beer bottle? Uh, not yet. <laughs> it's coming soon. I think the cans are doing away with the bottle. <laughs> okay, uh, so Marty's making all the money here. Yep, he usually does. He has to get the gap. <laughs> okay, anything else that uh, you want to showcase while we're here? No, just go out and um, support breast awareness for the cancer people. They're winners, and we said so on our tag. Okay, do you have a, did you tell me if you had a website or not? Um, we are on Facebook um, under NPL Engraving at primelink1.net. So under what engraving? Uh, at primelink1.net. What's it? No, I don't have. It's M under me, M Suzanne Bayshard. What, what you said? Something you said? NPL Engraving or something? <laughs> what did you say? Oh, NPL Engraving. NPL. Norman. Yeah. Patricia. No. Lawrence. Lawrence Engraving. <laughs> has nothing to do with their name. I have no idea why they went with NPL engraving, but they did. Just to confuse because people. it's it's too long a name. <laughs> it's Northeast Photo and Laser Engraving. Oh, okay. That's why. All right. Anything else? No. That's All it. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we have stopped at another familiar location. Well, not this particular location. What's your name? Mary Fortin. And who are you here representing Mary Fortin? Um, we own Amazing Grace Vineyard and Winery in Chazy, New York. Just a little bit north of the hamlet? Yes, just a little bit north. Between the Miners Woods and the hamlet of Chazy? You will find exactly, Grace. exactly. Okay, and... Uh, You've got a big brochure in front of you. What, any particular reason? Or is no, we're just um, advertising the Adirondack Coast um, Wine Cider and Food Festival today. Um, and it's going to be open until 8. And it's a one-day event. One-day event, yes. Second annual. Second annual, yes. And judging from the crowd here today, I would think that it might be a third annual. What do you think? I, I, absolutely. Last year was, um, the first year was very well attended. Um, and I know that Tom Fry, who's in charge of it, and the chamber, has have extended it to um, more wineries this year, more vendors, and more food events. So um, I, think, um, I think definitely there'll be another one next year. Uh, do you go to several of these types of things throughout the year? We do. Um, we tend to do them more in the fall and the spring. In the in the um, you know from about June until August, June to June to September, we tend to um, focus more on what's going on in our vineyard and our winery. We do summer events. Um, we do um, concerts in the vineyard every Saturday night. So that keeps us really busy through July and August. Absolutely. Well, do you have enough parking and seating if you get a 
popular group? Yeah, that's what yeah, we do. We do pretty well. Um, our biggest um, event draw tends to be our musical that we do every year, and um, usually we seat about a hundred people. We can put about thirty-five cars to forty cars on the property, and um, we have all kinds of good friends that help with that. And it's fun. It's fun. It's big, but it's fun. Yeah. Uh, is there a website or a Facebook page that people can vote? Yep, we have it? a Facebook page, and then we also have a website that ha has a list of everything that's going on in our vineyard and also in the um, Adirondack Coast Wine Trail. So. I have a storefront there on, on Route 9. Mm -hmm. How often are you open? We're open right now just on the weekends, 12 to 5. Um, but we are also open by appointment. So if you wanted to um, make an appointment and come in um, with a special group, often what we'll do is have like um, community groups like the Literary Guild or the Kiwanis will often just use our facility and come and taste in our vineyard, in our winery. and. We welcome them. Are you open year round? Or just, you know? Yes, if you wanted to come. We actually close on the weekends. Um, we're, we're actually closed to general traffic um, January, February, March, and, and April. Um, and then. That I gotta have a bottle of wine and they can call you? If they call us, yeah, I open for them. So it's not The last bad. thing you wanna do is deny somebody a bottle of wine. I know, it's true, it's true. Uh, uh, like we're talking with the Vescos, uh, they're finally. Uh, getting into a second crop here. Uh, how much uh, are you able to produce on site as far as grapes? Well, actually, this year we've done very well. We harvested about 6,000 pounds, which is more than what... Last year it was a little under... It was about 2,500, so we've over doubled our capacity. Um, we just have an acre, 650 vines, so, you know, we keep it small, uh, um, but we're able to... My husband's pressing right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's back home and he's pressing out the front and neck grapes. <laughs> so that's his job today. So. Well, you're here having fun. He's there. Yeah. That's yeah. Really well, he actually enjoys. He, he's not a crowd person. <laughs> he always wants me to do that. So he's happy just hanging out in the in the cellar and doing the pressing. Well, he's fine if he's up on stage. Then yeah, yeah. Yeah. But for some reason, he's just <laughs> he doesn't like to be the man behind the counter. So okay. I enjoy this because to right. get to socialize. Yeah, it works out great. Okay, anything else, Mary, that I should ask you? No, um, just you know, come on down if people, you know, and, and or if you don't make it this year, try looking next year. It'll it's be always too late for this year when people. Yeah, see it, yeah it's but. it's always um, the Columbus State weekend, so. Okay. People can plan on that. In yep, years. AdirondackCoastWineTrail.com. You go on the website. website. Yep. yep. So they can go to your website, mm -hmm. or Ray, so they can go to uh, yeah. that around that coast. Yep. Okay, thanks, Mary. Thank you. Take care. All right, I'm under the big top right now. If it rains, we're all set right here. Yes, we are. What's your name? I'm Sean Fry. Sean Fry, and everybody else is handing out wine. You're handing out water? Uh, I'm doing a maple hard cider today. That's hard cider? I got hard cider on tap right here. Oh, what's the water? That's for rinsing glasses. Oh, okay. So to get the, the taste of the other stuff out. Absolutely. Day. Okay. Uh, you're from where? Uh, Elf's Farm Winery in Cider Mill. And that is located right there on Route 9, just a little stone's throw away from here? Yep, we're right on Route 9, about two miles north of right where we are. Okay, now, uh, was it a year and a half or so ago, you guys had a big fire, and I'm sure a lot of people are wondering how, you, how you're doing since that. Yep, two years ago we had the fire. We are uh, almost fully rebuilt, a little bit of construction left to do, but we're getting back in the game, we're putting out some cider, putting out some wine. Okay, so you, you have both cider and wine there at that location? Yes, sir, we do. Okay. And what are your hours? When are you there? When, uh, when is your place open? We're open 10 to 6 every day. Every day? Every day. Uh, except the weekends, we're open 10 until usually about 9 or 10 o'clock. Wow. And then a short day, 12 to 5 on Sundays. And uh, year-round or just the... Uh, yeah, I think we're going to stay open year-round this year. Uh, we've been doing a Friday night wind down, a little bit of local music, do a little bit of complimentary bar food. So I think we're going to keep that going throughout the winter. So you have a big enough indoor place. Obviously, uh, you're going to have to be there in January. You can't be outdoors. Yep, a uh, nice indoor place. we got a fireplace in there. And, you know, nice, nice local vibe, laid back, relaxed. Okay. Now, uh, you have most of your own grapes. You buy outside grapes so how do you how do you guys do that uh, yeah just because the, um, the grape and wine industry up here is still really new so we, we source grapes from the Finger Lakes Long Island other regions 
you grow some on your own. I see some vines there as they go by. Yep, so. we do. Um, we, we're now up to 14 acres. Um, so we're going to have a, another three years. We'll get a really large harvest in, and, and we'll pretty much be self-sufficient in the next four years. Wow. So that's uh, how many acres? We, is 14 going to be enough? 14 will be enough for now. Wow. But, but there's stuff in there. We've done a few tours of different uh, areas that... That new guy going up there in Champlain has really got a nice looking location, doesn't he? That yeah, he, he put himself a really beautiful vineyard in there. Very nice rose. Is he producing yet? Uh, he's producing. We actually bought his grapes off him this year. That's I'm wondering. Because I know we talked to him about a year or so ago, and he was just starting to do it. And yeah, this, this was his first harvest, and uh, we purchased his grapes, and see, he's not uh, doesn't have his winery up uh, running yet. Yeah, yeah. But so we're always helping each other out. Our association is great. We're we're all in the same mindset, trying to promote the area, promote the wine trail, promote each other. Yeah, uh, no, the first one here, and he's not here today, is Phil Favro with Stonehouse, and uh, you know, he's been a, a great resource for a whole lot of people. I don't know if you guys talked to him at all when you were getting started, or absolutely, or he's uh, he's a member of our association. He was the first gentleman to grow grapes up here. Right. Uh, gave a lot of, but. Uh, <clears throat> Give everybody the idea, helped out with a lot of knowledge. He's a very smart man, a chemist. Um, so he had a lot of knowledge and, and he's willing to share. Well, in the old days, they had a guy named Johnny Appleseed that went around throwing apples out. I guess we're going <laughs> to call him Phil Mapleseed or something because he, he's really started this whole thing and it's really growing and it's turning out great, I think. He is. I guess he, you could definitely call him the uh, father of uh, grape growing winemaking up here in the North Country. All right, he's got a new title, whether he likes it or not. Yep. Phil's a kind of bashful, shy guy, but we're going to give him that title. All right, Sean, we're going to try to find your father, and we're going to wrap this program up. Thanks for chatting sure. with thank us. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Yeah, that was good. Adirondack Coast Race to Taste. This the official T-shirt you're wearing? This is the official T-shirt. It's a new event that we had this year, and we're trying to uh, make the wine festival more about foodies. Uh, so we invited all New York cooking schools free of charge here, uh, giving them local produce, and they're out back uh, of the Crate Center right on the beach uh, doing a uh, primitive Adirondack cooking. They have charcoal, wood, uh, a grate, and some great local produce, and four hours to prepare it. <laughs> okay. we. We pulled in uh, right around noontime, uh, shortly after, and they were they were setting up. So when it gets close to closing time here at five o'clock, they'll have their food all prepared and well, be before that even. Right? Closing time is eight. The festival oh, runs right. twelve to eight, but they're going to present at four, and then the uh, the trophy and stuff is going to be at around four forty-five. Too many events today. Is that the quilt show, and I think they're closing at uh, five. They might be, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, who are we talking to right now? Uh, I'm Tom Fry from Elf's Farm Winery and Cider House, and also one of the uh, the chairman of the uh, festival, the Adirondack Coast Wine, Cider, and Food Festival. Okay, we talked to your son Sean uh, over at the your exhibit over there. What uh, got you involved with putting something like this together? Um, you know, we started uh, we started the winery in 2006, planting grapes, and then we started selling wine in 2007. Um, and we knew that the region was going to grow and is growing as a wine region. We just needed something to showcase it. And uh, this is it. As I mentioned to your son and to a few others today, you know, Phil Favreau seems to have been the, the godfather of all this. And, mm -hmm. and I think anybody who, who succeeds around here is going to, you know, whether they'll know it in future generations or not, Oh, it to, to Phil Favreau at the Stonehouse. Uh, Phil was the first person to plant grapes around here that we know of commercially anyway. And uh, probably the year after Phil, we planted and a bunch of other people. And then Cornell started their Baker Farm, or, you know, I think it was the same year. So it was kind of like uh, spontaneous combustion. Everybody, all these things started to flare up all at once. Yeah. Correct, correct. <laughs> And it's certainly growing, and it's growing in a positive way, isn't it? Oh, I think it's growing absolutely in a positive way. We started, uh, we had six, five wineries, we're now six, and, a, and another cidery. Uh, we started three years ago working on the wine trail, and Betty Little and Janet Dupre, the Chamber of Commerce got behind it, the Farm Bureau. Uh, it took us three years to get the legislation passed. It was just signed last week by the Governor of New York. So this festival is very timely. Uh, in celebrating the passage of the Adirondack Coast Wine Trail. Now I know in traveling in southern Quebec, right along our, our border, the northern tier here, on the other side, I think people have been growing grapes there for years. 
Uh, the Canadians have been growing grapes. They have different grapes than uh, some of what we have. They've been growing them in Vermont in the Champlain Valley. Uh, New York is a, a little, you know, a step or two behind, but we're catching up rather quickly. And you know, and and you're probably like uh, Phil is, and I know all the other folks, people who want to get involved, want to know about the business. You're probably willing to share what you know. Oh, absolutely. I, I think the Lake Champlain Grape Growers Association has been very open. We've had uh, seminars, always willing to help people get involved in the business. And, and you know, my goal, uh, I'm first generation. My sons, my daughter are second generation in the wine business now. Uh, our goal is to see this, this region be as popular as the Finger Lakes, if not more so. Now, uh, Put something like this together takes some time. Do you have a committee that works with you, or? Oh, we have a we have a nice organizing committee: the Chamber of Commerce, the Adirondack Visitors Bureau, the City of New York, uh, uh, Josh Kreshner from Pod Studio, and the volunteers that you see working out front. They're all part of putting this on. It's you know they say it takes a uh, a, a village to raise a child. Well, it takes a, you know a, a village to run an organization and a festival like this. And my kudos go out to all the volunteers that help out in this. Okay, now, uh, you think you'll be leading the fray? Uh, I may use the word fray when I'm talking to a fry. Are you leading the, the fray again next year? Or? You know, i got to get through today. <laughs> and, you'll, you'll and, then, and then we'll see. <laughs> but, you know, we, we expanded the hours. We went two hours longer. We have more wineries. Uh, uh, we have more vendors this year. The ticket sales were stronger. Today is a beautiful day. So we're going to see how the weather works pro and against. Last year it was a little snowy, rainy, so a lot of people came in. Um, but, you know, as you can see from the crowds, it's still early. Yeah. Uh, we're open till late, but it, we're going pretty strong here. Yeah, yeah good crowd, I think. You're looking at it, it's beautiful weather outside. It's probably getting 70 degrees by now, I don't know. Oh, is, is that why? It starts to, you can look outside and see the, that sun shining, so it's a beautiful day. So. I've been running around putting fires out, making sure the cooking contest is going, getting ready for the Great Lucy Grape Stop. We, we, we're going to do that around 5. And that's where, you know, someone gets into the, two people get into a bucket and actually stomp grapes. And, and then Lucy, of course, is Lucy Ricardo. Uh, I love Lucy. There you go. <laughs> two great scenes. The one is the chocolate factory, and, and the other is the grape stomping one. So, the great Lucy grape stomp. Okay. All right. Thanks for chatting with us, Tom. Okay. Thank you thank very you. much. The first place you hit when you walk in here is a, also going to be the last place and probably the, the place that a lot of people should be spending some time at. <laughs> the coffee shop, what's your what's your, your business first Lakeside of all? Coffee in Rouse's Point, New York. And your name? Chris Deuce. Chris, uh, what's your association with Lakeside Coffee? I own the coffee shop. Oh, well, there you go. My wife has been there several times. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so what brings you here? I was asked to uh, participate this year and they thought it would be a good blend to have wine and cider and coffee so I said I'd give it a try. So. Okay, so is it, are you part of the, uh, you, you pay at the entry fee when you come in and you get free drinks, is this part of yes, it? Yes, you get the sample freshly brewed coffee and chocolate covered espresso beans and then we're selling the coffee by the pound. Okay, so you do have items for sale? Yes, we do. It looks like you have some people, they can. Are they capable of helping themselves? Uh, yes, they right? are. Oh. They've already been here once already. Okay, so well, that's good. <laughs> it's good to have repeats. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so. yes uh, I think um, more people should be uh, sipping the <laughs> more coffee today. Yes, Thank I've you. gotten a lot of comments and it's that they're happy to see me here. So, <laughs> <laughs> good. Yes. so uh, how long have you been there in Rouse's Point? It'll be six years in December. And uh, there's several new businesses down there over that time. There's, you know, the, seems to be picking up a little bit. Yes, it's great to see uh, more storefronts being occupied because when I started there was a lot of empty storefronts so I don't feel as lonely anymore on Lake Street so it's great. Now uh, what, what are your hours? You're open seven days a week I would assume? Six days a week. Six days a week. And uh, in the summer we're open seven days a week. Okay, so summer is what? Memorial Day to Labor Day or what do you call summer? Uh, Memorial Day till we lose the kids back to college, so about mid-August. Mid-August. Yep. That's summer, okay. Yep. So that's Sunday you close? 
Mondays. Monday. Oh. We're okay. open Tuesday through Sunday. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now, what do you offer besides the coffee? Oh, we have breakfast items, lunch items, soup, salads, sandwiches, uh, breakfast sandwiches, and we sell our coffee um, wholesale as well. So we're in a lot of local restaurants, a couple of the local grocery stores. So if you can't make it up to Rouse's Point, you can find us in Plattsburgh. Okay, do you have a Facebook page, a website? Yes, or? we do, both. both. Yep. It's under Lakeside Coffee? Lakeside-coffee.com, and the Facebook is under Lakeside Coffee. We post our specials every day on both sites. Okay. Anything else that I should be smart enough to ask you? I think you've done an excellent job, sir. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Tell my wife that. He's done an excellent job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay, we'll let you get back to uh, <laughs> pushing that uh, coffee. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Now what? Okay, it's so busy here, they're just selling everything they possibly can. What's your name? Uh, my name's Steve Bushy. Steve Bushy, what you got here? Uh, right here is Courtney. Courtney, yeah. And uh, maybe I know her father. <laughs> yeah, yes, right. Yep. This is Patricia, right Patricia, here. Patricia, right, right. right. Slating away right now. Right. Right. Now, uh, what are you folks doing here? Well, we're here, we have a uh, booth. We uh, represent Conroy's Organics. And okay. so we're selling our grass-fed beef chili and our vegetarian chili. We have some rolls and and desserts and chocolate and all kinds of interesting things. Well, technically, if you eat grass-fed beef, isn't that vegetarian? Nah, it's, maybe in some circles, but They're maybe diet. not, diet not really with a vegetarian. Oh, yeah. okay. I've always misunderstood that, I guess. <laughs> Here I thought I was a vegetarian. Yeah, well, uh, you were close. <laughs> you are close. Almost is close enough. <laughs> okay, and you guys are located on Route 9? Yes, yeah. we're Route 9. We have our own, uh, um, we have our own grass-fed beef that we sell every day. And we actually sell a chili every day. And we have a wide selection of uh, for breakfast and lunch and dinners. We have an, uh, a, a small uh, cafe, which is pretty popular, actually. Okay, so when you go by there, you can stop in and oh, have on premise. Absolutely, absolutely, it's very popular. As a matter of fact, my wife isn't here right now. I think, I think we probably, it's, I'm sure the cafe is full. Really? Oh yeah. So that's where she is. That's where she is. That's right. It uh, keeps both of us busy. Okay, so you all work there. Yes. Um, Does Courtney actually work, or does she just hang around and oh, well, talk yeah. with the customers? Yeah. Well, Courtney, yeah. Courtney's okay. on the move. It's hard to teach she's so by fast. Week, uh, Conroy's employee by weekend. Yeah, the weekend. Yeah, <laughs> weekend chick. <laughs> All right. So you stop in and see her on the weekend. You see you during the week? But your wife's there right now? Yeah, my wife's there right now. I, I am still uh, doing some work in Burlington, okay. and, but my wife is there every day. And so, yeah, stop in and say hi, and and, uh, and I'm sure you're gonna like what you see. We have a very interesting uh, menu as far as our as far as our organic foods and our natural foods, and, uh, okay. and so it's you a fun place the, to go. The hours and the days? Did you tell me that already? Yeah, it's seven to seven. Seven to seven. Seven right. days a week. Seven days a week. Seven, seven, seven. That's pretty easy to remember. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, you run out of hand. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we try to keep it simple. Is that year round or? Year. Yeah, it's year round. Okay. Summer, winter, same hours. Same hours. Okay. Well, we're gonna wrap this up right here. You're gonna be the ending here. All right. Great. Closing act. That's. That's it. That's the big. Uh, I should take my clogs off to get ready to dance. Start dancing. <laughs> Unless you want to be the closing act. Like chili for the road? Yeah, we'll take some chili for the road. Beef, All right. Beef or vegetarian? Uh, beef for me, vegetarian. Uh, want beef or vegetarian, Judy? You're vegetarian. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, we're going to wrap it up here at the Adirondack Coast Wine, Cider, and Food Festival. We're going to wrap it up with some food. Yeah. And, uh, but the record show I did not have any wine today. I had some... Uh, Apple cider, but not any wine. So uh, I'm this sure is, you're safe. <laughs> this is the second <laughs> annual, and we're going to look forward to the third annual. And who knows? We've it's, a fun, it's a fun event. Oh, yeah. It really is. Uh, people should be down here and, and uh, have a good time. There's a lot to eat, a lot of wine, and cider to try. It's great. Okay. So we're going to wrap it up, and I'm going to have a... What's she giving me? Sure, you're, getting some, you're getting some chili. Chili. Okay, we'll get some grass-fed chili. Grass Grass-fed beef chili. Beef chili to go. Thanks for watching. Hometown Cable. Viewer-supported local television.